Hey mom, can I talk to you? I just wanted to like come out and say something about my preferences. Oh my god, this sounds serious. Juicy. What is it, honey? I'm just, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a vegan. Oh no, I thought you were coming out of the closet. I always wanted a little gay boy, but now a dreaded vegan. Ah, oh, Francois, throw some bacon on. Vegan conversion therapy starts right now. Hey, it's Mike here, and today, being vegan around family and friends and how to easily overcome the tension, awkwardness, and pain. I wish it were that simple. Maybe how to lessen the tension, awkwardness, and pain. Well, at the very least, I'm gonna try and tell you what I've learned about this over the last seven years or so of being vegan for what it's worth. Everything I know in a few minutes, let's go. Now, I've had a lot of people emailing me about being vegan around their families and friends, etc. And I've done a few videos about the social aspects of being vegan, but I took a more sociological approach, looking at some sociological studies and stuff like this. But I've never really just shared my practical views on just how to deal with all of this. And so we're gonna go over some tips and tricks and some hacks, that sounds bad. Don't hack up your friends, that's not vegan. And before we get into family stuff in particular or friend stuff in particular, I wanna cover some general social stuff, which I think is useful. Whether you're just defending yourself being vegan or you're doing some vegan advocacy, talking to people about being vegan is an art. And not a lot of people are that great at art. And even great artists can make some pretty crappy art. Basically what I'm saying is things can get a little hairy when talking to people about veganism. And something that new vegans definitely need to be prepared for, which I've experienced a lot, is that there are certain people out there that just when they find out that you're vegan, you don't even have to say anything about it in particular, they will get offended. There's kind of nothing you can do in that situation. And in other situations, I would say that it's almost more powerful to not be talking about veganism, not push the vegan points. Sometimes it's just better to lead by example, show that you're a healthy vegan that is also sane. Being a healthy example is especially good when somebody may or may not be interested in veganism, but they see the health aspect as a barrier to entry. And in case they're curious, that's why knowing the health studies is a really good idea. And that's how I got started in the trajectory of this YouTube channel in the first place, was simply researching so that I could defend my own diet and not have to worry about it as much. And sticking to the topic of general social interactions, there are definitely some tools you can have in your toolbox, like a condescending tone. That's always a good one. This was just on the ground, I thought it'd be cool. I'm kidding, but an actual good one is humor. Humor can definitely diffuse the situation, but people often make fun of vegans thinking that it's legitimately humorous, like shoving meat in your face. They actually think that that is funny, but it's not. So when you're making a joke, you have to ask, is it at the expense of another person? And if it is, then you probably shouldn't make it. Another sort of tool is remembering to focus on being emotionally correct. And I did a whole video about this, but it's worth reiterating briefly. And the definition, essentially, from Sally Cohn's TED Talk. It, emotional correctness is the tone, the feeling, how we say what we say, the respect and compassion we show one another. And most of the time, if you aren't emotionally correct, you've already lost the battle. But I think a really good example of somebody who's emotionally correct is Earthling Ed. He's talking to people on the street about veganism. For example, when he talked to Millie of Infowars, who was just spouting out a bunch of crazy stuff, he still was patient with her, did no ad hominem attacking or anything like that. So basically you admit that the entire premise of veganism is based on having globalization. I mean, it, I mean, like I, globalism, essentially. I mean, you, I, I know what info was like, and the, the topic of globalization is, is a scary word for you guys, and I appreciate that. But the issue of veganism is something that we would like to spread across the world just because it's a more compassionate and ethical way to live. And really, what, what would be the problem in doing that? But I think the most frustrating part about being emotionally correct as a vegan is that a lot of the time, the person who's talking to you that isn't vegan is not going to be emotionally correct. And so you still have to take the high ground and be emotionally correct. Otherwise the conversation is dead in the water. They've reinforced that vegans are ridiculous and horrible and you're not gonna make any headway at all. Okay, now let's move on to family in particular. And in my experience, most of the time when a family is giving their vegan family member a hard time, it's largely from concerns about health. And a lot of times it just comes out of not having all of the information. I can't believe the vegan conversion therapy failed. And you know what, son, I was always so proud 
proud of how you were able to grow such a vigorous beard at age 12, but it's all just protein, so it's gonna fall right off. But mom, I can get protein on a vegan diet. No, first your beard is gonna fall off, and then your body is gonna shut down from a lack of protein. You know what? I, I need to make the call. What call? Hello, is this Rocky's Tombstones? I need to pre-order a tombstone for my son because he's a vegan, which means he's on his way out. When do I need it? Son, how long have you been vegan? A week? I'd, I'd say 48 hours. You know what? No, look at him. I'd say within the next 24 hours. What? There's beef tallow in the headstones. How does that even work geologically? Never mind. You know what? I'm gonna have to dump you in a river now. You make my life so hard. So I'd say nutritional concerns are the culprit in about 80% of scenarios. And there are two super good things you can do. One is you can just print out the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics position on vegetarian diet. It says directly that an adequately planned vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life. And the second one would be if you're a kid, maybe showing your parents a few days or even a week of chronometer or another nutrition tracker. So you can show them that you're getting everything that you need and go one step further and challenge your parent or family member to a one week showdown of chronometer and see who's see who's missing more nutrients. That's a fun one. Probably them. But family is kind of the hardest because you can't always escape. There's an obligation there. I mean, holidays, vegans know about holidays. It's that time of year that everybody has to sit down at the same table and eat. It's food related and it's close quarters and it's just, it's basically a battleground. And depending on the family at holidays, there can be extreme personalities on both sides of the spectrum. Hey, I bought a turdunk monkin. It's a turkey inside of a chicken with a monkfish inside. And then there's also caviar inside. So if you take a meat tenderizer and whack it really hard, you can shoot fish eggs into your mouth just because I hate vegans that much. Hey, vegans, pew, 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 pew. And on the other side, hey, I bought a tiger to Thanksgiving to show you what it's like being eaten so that you don't eat animals next year. Hey, Tigger, just take a limb from each, all right? But the dinner table in particular has a lot of tension. And as a vegan, in my experience, it's it's very possible to over push some vegan points and then trigger the backfire effect, which is all too familiar. And you can bet that if a family member has a dead animal in their mouth, there's probably gonna be some backfire. In fact, I would say you can make the best possible, most intelligent point. And if you make it at the wrong time, it's a point against you. And in terms of those meals, depending on how accommodating your family is, you're probably gonna have to make a vegan dish for everybody and then make some extra vegan food for yourself and not get too mad when Aunt Millie's vegan dish is actually just a normal omelet. Now there are some of those lucky vegans where their family just also goes vegan overnight because they went vegan or almost entirely vegan. But for most people, family is pretty difficult. And I will say I'm definitely not perfect in these areas. And for most family members, there kind of is no such thing as a perfect relationship anyway, sadly. So you just gotta do your best. That was uplifting. Okay, now let's quickly cover friends. If your friends are being really big butt cakes, like over the top butt cakes about you being vegan and just not being good friends, maybe, maybe they just aren't good friends after all. Like the people who peace out when you go vegan are the same people that would peace out when any adverse thing happens to you. And maybe they're fun to be around. They're just probably not that great of people. But if your friends are pretty good friends and they're still hanging around, but continue to give you a hard time about being vegan, it's important to understand that they're probably just showing some cognitive dissonance, which is that uncomfortable feeling that you get when your beliefs and your actions don't line up. And I do have a whole video on cognitive dissonance. Apparently I have a video on everything, but going vegan forces your friend to look in the mirror and they probably care about animals. And by being vegan, you're saying there's a better way to treat animals and you're doing it and they're not. And that causes problems in their brain case. Bacon, bacon, bacon. And a particular point of contention between vegan and non-vegan friends is choosing restaurants. And the reality is that you have to at least go to a restaurant with vegan options. And if your friends aren't willing to do that, well, they're probably not very good friends once again. <laughs> But I would say that as the vegan, the most considered thing to do is to look up a few restaurants that are vegan friendly or all vegan and present the options at the very least. Hopefully there are enough options. And another thing that I've experienced with friends as a vegan, maybe some of you have, is that there's that one friend that always just, they want nothing more than to see you or another vegan eat some animal product. Like it will make their life. And I would say just be confident in your beliefs. Hold strong, shiv them, don't buckle. Did I say shiv them? Don't do that. That's once again, that's not vegan. 
And my final point would be that a lot of this has to do with vegans getting bullied to some extent. And a good point with bullying is to just not be too reactionary. The more that somebody reacts, the more that a bully is going to want to fill that void in their soul. So in summary, be confident. Don't push being vegan at the wrong time. Try and be emotionally correct. Use humor and don't react so that those bullies don't get at you. All right. That's pretty much it. I do want to mention that I played Vegan Jeopardy at the Sonoma County Veg Fest recently, which was awesome. And the winners who I wanted to shout out are Andy Topol and Heather Gates. Way to go, guys. Kick butt. Finally, don't worry, guys. The next video will actually have some science in it. It will be more science-y. And yeah, two videos with, like, no science in a row. Unsubscribe. Actually, if you haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe and like the video because we're all slaves to the algorithm. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Can't wait to give thanks for how many dead animals I can stick inside of other dead animals.